Okay, here. So with the Rosicrucian cars, it's a beautiful symbol. It used to be if someone knew, knew this, they could never give a copy of this to anyone. They would have to hand color it and and pass it on and give them the teaching uh, as they would as they would do it. They weren't allowed to just make a photocopy and give it to someone. Times have changed a century, but it used to be these were only passed on by oral traditions and by hand drying these out again. So here's your basic cross, the, the angles, the horizon, the midheaven, the IC going up and down. And this cross itself, each, the, 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 um, they're colored a little differently, but on the cross, but they, if you folded each, each end of the cross up, they would fold up to make a box. And the bottom flap, which is longer, would fold over and be the top of the box, and they would make the cube of space, which in some mystical traditions has a very great meaning at this cube of space rather than the sphere of space. It's very much in the Kabbalistic teachings and in and, and some of the Kabbalistic teachings, and I think it's part of the source of, I don't know, I think it's anti Semitic or anti something or other. The, the, the concept that people thought the world was flat was totally ignorant concept. Somebody saw these drawings and saw pictures of the map of the world posed on this square thing and people thought the world was flat. And it wasn't that anyone has observed the sign and watched it come up and down. No, it's just not a square or a flat. But in mystical terms, this was there. So this is the, the cross of like the four angles of the chart, really, uh, with the idea that there's special depth in getting your motivation of the IC down low. But in the center, you have your yellow, blue, red, you have your three primary signs. Then you have the six the six colors of the masculine air. Then you have the 12 colors of the zodiac going around it. But in this one, they're put in, in Hebrew letters. But it really, you, you really have the zodiac. This is the rose of the zodiac in the cross of life. And inside of it, here's the six pointer to start again with the sun in the center. And each one, Mercury, Venus, Saturn, Mars, Jupiter, and the moon are put around the star. And this is the code. This is the main cross that's studied for years and years by initiates, by people who learn one secret after another come to implications, deeper implications of the cross. So um, there's a whole astrology. It's a language that branches out into many dimensions, from science, from practical things to agriculture. It's to to medicine, to herbs, to healing, to nature, to weather, to science, to planets, to space travel. It's it's everywhere. It's the structure. It's the structure of nature. It's the music of nature. And people have come to study this for many ways. And before their computers, these materials were drawn up from mystical and meditations and deep thinking and profound thought, which how astrology was passed on. Now today with modern knowledge, we really get accurate information. But all these have code words, like you see I-N-R-I in me. You have different mystical symbols in all of these areas with the chart. And people would come and have they learn, take years to study each of There's a five point of star, there's a six, there's a flower. And each little bend has some meaning and some color. Okay. So this was, again, we come back to my little drawing of the sun with the earth around it, and it's my version of a of the color cross, of the cross without all the other symbols, just using the color. And yeah, I think that's the end of this section. Okay, where are we for time? Good. Okay. All it, these are deep, profound concepts, but but we start from simple color, but it goes up to very subtle and psychic and mystical things and. Wow, it's just light and darkness, yin and yang. But much of my teachings in astrology is really teaching you the, the rhythms and the patterns of color and how they fit into the zodiac. Without expressing that, expressing in terms of behavior, energy, but now you can see it too. There's room to reflect and think about this. I'm hoping to get these charts made into a computer program so people can get the charts made rather than take all the time to draw them out. And um, once I finish the set of webinars, I may try and get a group of people together to make these um, 
what were these colors and colors in the chart and make these wheels available. Okay. Um, all right, one more set of slides here. Where are we? There. Where did I put them? Okay, down. Down, down, down. Ross, Ross, Ross. Webinar. No, people get the creation of webinars. Color. Okay. So we want to take. Okay, here we go. So we're just going to um, look at color in the um, in the charts. Let's see if I make these bigger. So we get the. Yeah, okay, that's good. Okay, so these are the color mandala charts that I did again back in the 70s, all colored pencil. It's hard to believe the hours went into it, but they were like meditations for me. They, I had to see the colors of people. I had to understand the colors and the, and the frequencies and see how different they were in, in, against astrology. So again, some of these charts, they're all, most of them are the color, are colored penciled ones. They have the color of the signs. They have the cycles the colors for the planets. In this case, a lot of planets in Leo, so you see a lot of yellow circles going around. You have the aspects in the middle. There is a half that's shaded. You can see the half shaded and the half that's light to show what's above or below the horizon, but you can't always see it in all the charts. Some of it didn't come out. So sometimes the gray was too light and it didn't show up. It didn't carry with the transaction. Sometimes I didn't know someone's time and it's not there. <clears throat> but even without someone's time, you still will get the planets and the signs and the colors. And the aura of it. So this, these first two charts we're looking at with two yogis, or Sri Aurobindo, who was um, he lived in Pondicherry in southern India. Um, he was involved with Gandhi and with people fighting for the independence of India from the British. And because he was kind of a revolutionary and fighting against them. He was wanted for treason by the British. They would have killed him if they caught him. And he lived in Pondicherry. The small French enclave was owned by the French in India. And he stayed there and they couldn't touch them. So he lived his life in this area. Um, but he, he, along the way, he got more and more mystically inspired. And um, he, he, he was a very literate person. He read most of the books, many of the different books of Indian religion and philosophy and understanding. And he saw that there are so many different types of religions and so many different types, so much knowledge in different sects and different groups that it should all be put together. So he put himself in a room and stayed in this room. It wasn't like a black room, it was a room where people could come in and visit him, but he never went outside his place for 24 years. And in that 24 years, he would meditate, he would write, and he brought all of the teachings of India that he got to get exposed to, and he transformed into one concept, the concept of the descent of supermental consciousness into life. And his books were writing about this. So he's a very inspired person. And um, he wrote, he, he, the, the city Oroville was built around him. And um, so this was, he had, anyway, I'm not gonna get into, the, I can get into details of any of these charts, I'm not gonna go into, but this was Orobindo. And he had this chart with all the blue, the red, and the yellow being the predominant colors. So he had one, two, three, four, three planets in Leo, but one early Virgo, one late Cancer. So you have all these bright colors in his wheel. And when we look at Swami Vivekananda, another yogi who was a little more not so di he was dynamic in his own way. He really inspired to a lot, but he had the Capricorn. No, he had this, yeah, he had the Capricorn energy was much more reflective and disciplined and brought his teachings up. You can see the darker colors. You, can, you see the pattern types in these so so quickly. You know, so um, Aurobindo would be, because uh, you can do the seesaw twice, it's more, it would be a splay chart. No, it wouldn't. Yeah, you think it'd be a seesaw, but you can divide this two or three ways. So it can't be the seesaw, it becomes this display with, um, the recommend they can only divide two ways. It is a seesaw chart with the green Libra planets against the other. So I love the pattern types, how they show up by color. Originally, when Mark and Jones wrote the pattern types, he wrote them 
for the houses. He divided them and put them randomly depending which houses they were in, but they weren't exactly defined. They were done by houses. And when I put them into the signs and started seeing the patterns in the signs, they became much more clearly distinct. So we have a bunch of people's charts to look at, mostly get impression of what you can, how you feel and see things with people's charts just by um, the color. This is another one of taking different, taking the colors, but this is the signs that are but really for intuition, feeling, sensation, thinking, putting these four going into the different levels of the psyche, goes inside itself, inside itself. Another mandala. I, I was in a phase where I made a lot of different mandalas when I was first understanding. So I, this chart, <laughs> this is Southern, Northern, Southern Hemisphere chart, Paul Hogan, who played Crocodile Dundee, and we'll, we'll be using his chart again uh, next week when we do the Southern Hemisphere charts. But in the Northern Hemisphere, where are we here? No, Northern Hemisphere is on the right. This is early. I usually do it the other way. But in the Northern Hemisphere, he's born. He's by October fifth, nineteen thirty-nine, nine thirty a.m. So in the Southern Hemisphere, in the Northern Hemisphere chart, we make him a Libra with a Leo moon. Leo conjunct Mars, uh, conjunct Pluto, opposed by Mars squared by Saturn. He has this T square, and Saturn opposes Venus, but the Sun would be in Libra. When you reverse the seasons and reverse the signs, it's like if you fold these two pages back to each other, these two charts back to back, you'll have one chart looking at from one side to the other. And now in this, if you reverse it to the southern hemisphere chart, his sun would be in Aries and his moon would be in Aquarius. And I think it's far more likely you have the jokester, the adventurian, the person doing the physical crocodile than the archetype with his eccentric way of thinking. Um, and going around, I, I see that as a real strong confirmation of his Aries. Of course, we'll come back to this, but you can see how the colors, they're different. In this case, there's just the aspects in the center. There's not the color. This is not a color chart in the, for the aspects, but you can still see some of those. Okay, so these ones have the color. This is Goethe's chart, uh, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, and he was a mystic and very involved, much involved with color and sound, color, and mysticism. And um, this chart is um, would be a locomotive chart, one empty area moving into it. But it was the Virgo with the Pisces moon, or the full moon. The analytical side and the mystical side of the Pisces coming in together. But each planet, has each aspect has a mood here. You can see there's a Pisces burgundy, to an amber, the Neptune to the, to the Jupiter. You see there's a Pisces amber, a, a burgundy amber color. You see the red, the blue, the blue green colors. And you can see different, so these textures build up this mandala of the feeling of the person.